Hello, welcome to section 2.1, where we're going to be discussing frequency distributions and their graphs. This is broken into two videos. The first one is just introducing what a frequency distribution is, and the second one is when we actually create it. We're moving to the descriptive portion of statistics, so we've learned the basics, and now we're going to be analyzing the data and um, organizing it in a manner that we can analyze it more readily. So a frequency distribution is a table that shows classes or intervals, another word for that could be groups, of data entries with a count of the number of entries in each class. Okay, so we're kind of tallying information. Frequency is of a class is the number of data entries in the class. So that script lowercase f is representative of frequency. And here's what it looks like. We have our class intervals, tallies, so we're just saying um, when pieces of data fall between 0 and 39, and the frequency, which is just summing what the tallies are. So we have one there and we put one. Sum is the total number of pieces of data that we have, and we are totaling it up. So a couple things about this is we have the class intervals are defined by um, lower. The class interval is represented in this distribution table with a lower class limit. So that's the lowest value that can be in that class. And an upper class limit. And that's the biggest value that can be in that class. So it's boundaries. We um, have a class width. So class width is how many data values are in the class. So if we have from 0 to 39, the class width would be 40. If you think about it, you're saying, well, 39 minus 0 is 39. So there's 39 numbers represented in that class. But you have to account for the fact that 0 is a number as well. So you have to add the value of zero as one of those possible numbers that could be in the range. Um, let's say that this distribution table is about sit-ups. And if you do zero sit-ups, you would fall into this range. If you did 39 sit-ups, you would fall into this range. So there's 40 possible numbers of sit-ups that you could do that you'd fall into this range. Frequency is just the number of data points, number of data points that fell into that class interval, and it's really just the sum of the tallies. Um, and the sum is all the data points in which you collected. So the class width is considered to be 40. You have six classes. Okay, and I know that because I have one, two, three, four, five, six different buckets per se that you could put your data into. And I have 31 data entries. And I know that because I have 31 pieces of data. So look at all the information we're able to gather from just this simple table. This is what it looks like when you take the data from the table and put it into um, a histogram. So notice here that I have my, I have a lower class boundary and I have an upper class boundary. All of my bars are touching. There's no spaces. So it almost looks like a line bar except for there are no spaces. I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five classes. I also have a band here. So we're trying to figure out what the class width would be. To figure out what the class width would be, class width, I would say 176, my upper minus my lower, 124, and that's going to end up being 52, but you have to add 1 to account for the 124. 
So there's 53 in my class width. So we'll write that here, 53 in my class width. And then if we're trying to figure out what our sample size is, we have a lowercase n because this is, again, a sample and not the population. We have the frequency list listed on the left side of our histogram. So I'm just going to write the numbers in. In the first class, it looks like we have six. If I add together 176 and 124, you're going to get 300. And if I divide that by 2, because 300 is simplifying a fraction or applying the operation of division, is going to give me 150. So sometimes in these histograms, you'll see that they use the midpoint, and the midpoint is just the average of the upper and lower class. I know this is wordy, but don't let it intimidate you, because we basically talked about all the steps you have to do. So if you're going to construct a frequency distribution from a data set, this is what you do. You decide on the number of classes to use. The number should be between 5 and 20. So how many buckets do you want to break your information up? You want to think about if you have, let's say, 30 data sets, so 30 pieces of data you want to drop into those separate buckets, do you really want to have 20 different classes? It's, it's really not going to give you information that you need to, that you could readily look at, I should say. But if you have 100 pieces of data, um, maybe you want eight classes. So you want to really play with that number. But I just want you to remember that it's between 5 and 20 because people often um, go a little too high or a little too low when coming up with their classes. You're going to find the class width, determine the range of data, and divide this by the total number of classes. We'll do this on the next slide. And round up to the next convenient number. And if it's a whole number, you round up. So this is the only time in your whole career or at least for statistics, that you're going to round up. Whenever you're determining your final number, you always round up, even if it's a whole number. You're going to find the class limits. You can use the minimum data entry as the lower um, limit of the first class. To get the lower limit of the next class, add the class width, and you continue until you reach the last class. Um, then find the upper limits of each class. They can't overlap, so um, it, you just kind of, we're going to add and subtract as we get through it. Make a tally for each data entry in the row of the appropriate class, and then count your tallies and record the number. Okay, so um, we're going to actually do this in the next example. The first thing we're going to attack is calculating the class width and the class limits. So the way we do this, as it was defined on your last slide, number three, you're going to take your highest value, which is 134, 134. And you're going to subtract the lowest value. Subtract 100. And then you're going to divide by the number of buckets or the number of classes you want, 7. So following order of operations, 134 minus 100 will give me 34. And I'm going to divide that by 7. When you do that, you're going to get approximately 4.86. So we want to round up to the next whole number, so our class width will be 5 for the class width. Now to set the class limits, my first number would start with the lowest value. Okay, So what we're doing now is we're setting up our classes. These are the buckets for our tallies. You start with your lowest number, which is 100. I'm going to want five different groups, so I just keep adding five. 105, 110, 115, 120. One, oops, it's moving on me. 125 and 130. So we have, let's just double check, we need seven classes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven classes. Good. And now what we need, this is our lower class, we need the upper class. So you want to think about making sure all our buckets are complete. If we start at 100 and the next class starts at 105, 
the first class has to end at 104. This goes to 105, and the next one's 110, 109. Or you can just keep adding 5 on the right side as well. So this would be 114, 119, 124, 129, and 134. And these on the right are the upper class limits. So we have seven classes. Our class width is five, and we've identified our lower class limit and our upper class limit. What I'd like you to do now is go ahead and give the second one a try. Pause the video though, give yourself time to do the work, and then check your answer on the next slide. So make sure you try the work first. Hopefully you paused it. But basically what I did is I took my highest value, which was 69, I subtract my lowest value of 42. I'm breaking it into six different buckets. And when you do that, you get approximately 4.5, but you always have to round up to the next whole number. So then I start with my lowest value here, which is 42. And I keep adding five. And I double checked, I have six classes. And then on the right side, if I 47 starts my second class, and 46 has to end my um, first class. And I just added by fives to go up. Okay, so hopefully you did all right. I will see you soon.